Welcome to the Natty 19 Podcast. This is another special fiasco edition where we are performing the Supernatural Files. If you haven't caught part one, make sure you listen to part one first because lots of interesting and intriguing stuff has been happening with lots of interesting and strange characters. So, as we move into Act 2, we should keep in mind that we are moving toward our resolution and a tilt has been introduced to the story. There will be a death that occurs right on time and love will rear its ugly head. Samantha Birch. <laughs> so Samantha Birch is standing in line at Shirley's Cafe, waiting for her two coffees she gets every Monday morning for her and Timothy before she goes to work. She mixes his just how he likes it and hers the same and turns to walk out and bumps into a tall, balding gentleman. His facial features are gaunt, and he smells of cigarettes. Someone be cigarette smoking, man. Hello there, Samantha. Ooh, he knows her name. Fuck. <laughs> On your way to the bookstore, I see. As he... Reaches into his trench coat (laughs) (coughs) (laughs) and pulls out his pack of cigarettes, pulls one out, lights it. Marlowe lights, (laughs) 100s. And at this point, Samantha had spoken to both Timothy and to uh, Little One about the cigarette smoking man. Little One and her had seen each other on and off around dusk when she was taking photos around the town when he would sneak out. And she said, who are you and why are you following my friends? Oh, I think all will be revealed in due time. All you have to do is stay right on course. Samantha will all of a sudden try to look as defiant and brave as possible. She'll say, I've been doing some digging. And I know that Timothy's family also owns part of the Applewood Manor. Both of their families have been struck by some awful tragedies. Is it is it for that reason you follow both of them? Let's just say the Applewood Manor is a staple in this town. It doesn't belong to anyone. It belongs to all of us. Now we vote? Sure. Uh, bad. It's because there's a lot of bad left on the table. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, bad. So, if I were you, I wouldn't get too invested in your friend Timothy. Well, there's certainly something special about that property. Irame will think I'm your Ir- Irame. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's certainly something special about that property. Samantha thinking of her friend, little one, and how. His existence is pretty amazing in general. Samantha will... What did I say she'd say? Whatever I said she'd say. (laughs) Then then she'll push past him out of the coffee shop and on to see Timothy, anxious to tell him that she just saw him. What Samantha was hoping to get from the situation was some information about why the property seemed so special. The, or- the orchard as a whole, all that land, what was so special about it? And why hadn't Timothy said that he owned part of the orchard and manor? <laughs> You're the one that made that up. Yeah, I know. 
All right, Timothy, Timothy didn't even tell me that he owned that. <laughs> well, I had to bring together the fact that tragedy had befallen both the families, and why mm. would it have been those two? Love is rearing its ugly head. So <laughs> yeah. mm. Um, you just be tripping. <laughs> Uh, let's set a scene here. Um, maybe this will also this will this is gonna be up at the Applewood Manor, and it's gonna the scene is gonna be again with Timothy, Klaus, and the Smoking Man. Hmm. Are you gonna play both of them? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I, I can try a jump in. Yeah. I can be the smoking man. But he was already doing the smoking man. Oh, yeah. So what? Yeah, Two yeah. people played yeah. Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get like more on the smoking man now. Two people also played Becky and Rose. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> you look pissed right now. Fuck it, the scene is set. Let's try it. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Start us off. All right. <clears throat> I think Timothy is... Uh, Timothy's arriving at the manor. He's been meeting with Klaus. This is probably a few weeks after our initial... Since we began. Uh, he's been meeting with Klaus a lot more often in, in light of the recent investigation on the tragedy that's befallen them. So, yeah, Klaus would hear the rapping on his door. The door opens up, and uh, Klaus's pale face in the sunlight reveals a broad smile. He's like, Ah, Timothy, I have been growing to looking forward to these meetings. Come on in, young man. As Timothy walk, nods his head at Klaus, a, a warm greeting, the door closes to reveal the cigarette smoking man sitting in a recliner in Klaus's living room. Klaus, what is he doing here? <laughs> this gentleman has come by to inquire about the apples that grow here. And since I do not do anything with the apples, I thought it would be quite pleasant for somebody if they were to enjoy the fruits <laughs> of these wonderful trees. I don't know why that makes me giggle. <laughs> uh. I, sorry, I did not catch your name. I forget your name, Mr. S S cigarette Smoking <laughs> The cigarette smoking man. <laughs> <laughs> Who's doing the man? Are you doing him? <laughs> oh, I thought John was. I thought that was what we ended on. No? Uh, it doesn't matter. The cigarette smoking man puts a cigarette out in the ashtray. Names are so flighty. They come and go, and not one belongs to one for very long. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but you can call me Richard. <laughs> 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 I was just taking my leave, young Timothy. Please, uh, you're welcome to come and pick apples whenever you please. <laughs> As the smoking man begins to take his leave, Timothy stands firmly in the doorway. He says, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> By young Timothy. <laughs> oh, I'm voting. <laughs> it's gonna go poorly, bad. For Timothy, it's gonna go good. Good. Yeah. Oh shit! You're gonna make me be the tiebreaker. Yeah. <laughs> it just um, seemed like a good point to vote. I think I might go random. One to three is good. <laughs> it's a three. So it's going good. good for Timothy. Two goods. Oh, you did it. I don't think so. I want some answers, and I want them now. Timothy, do you know this gentleman? I don't know a thing about him, Klaus, but something tells me that he knows something about this tragedy you speak of. 
Costa's face darkens. The cigarette smoking man gives out a chuckle. You mean you are not here for apples? <laughs> you have lied to Klaus. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Fair enough, young Timothy. I believe I owe both you an explanation. I was actually hoping to put an offer in on the deed to this land. <laughs> that was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you think it will sell any part of this land to you? How does 1.5 million sound? Like a lot of lollipops, master. No, he's not in the scene. <laughs> I guess at that, the cigarette smoking man would pull a contract out from his... <laughs> Go. This is going with, with a pen. <laughs> this is you deciding if it goes good or bad. No, it's going good for Timothy. Oh, that's right. Or how it's going to go good. Amen. Yeah, Timothy wants information from the cigarette smoking man. So wants to know what he's up to. I cannot speak to what young Timothy will say for his portion of this, but I would like you to walk. I guess Timothy would stand firmly and say, No deal. And then the cigarette smoking man lowers his head. He puts the paper back in his coat. He says, Well, I am truly sorry for you both then. And he goes to leave again. This time, Timothy steps aside. And the smoking man takes his leave. Damn. So Timothy and Klaus agreed no deal. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was kind of hoping that was going to be the opposite, but that didn't work. So we'll move on. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been good if one of you went for it and one of you didn't, because then it would create like a battle we could all play off of. You know what I mean? But... uh. Since you're both in agreement, now we all of our angst is against this imaginary character that none of us really are in the game. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Well, that harkens back to I Timothy and Samantha somehow need to seek revenge on this guy. You know, the cigarette smoking man. I, w- I had kind of, because w- how the story was going, I had kind of saw it as a you were going to seek revenge because of your family and because she was your admirer, she was going to aid you. And she cared enough to pursue it with you because she was your right. admirer. That could, be, that could still work. Yeah, and yeah. I, either way, Timothy wanted to, know, what we gather, what we know now is what he wants. Yeah. He, he's interested in the land. We and that's why. why he targeted... That's why, you know, tragedy has befallen these families. The scene is going to open back in, in the den with little one once again at the Ouija board and the master standing behind him, looking over his shoulder. I'm trying very hard. You must Concentrate. I'm concentrating. Don't hit me again. If you can talk to your friend and get him to answer our questions, then you'll get all the lollipops that you can suck on. (laughs) All right. I I know I can do this. (laughs) I want you to ask him a specific question. All right, our creator is a question, Barry. Right. Will you please answer us? What does that cigarette smoking man want with Applewood Manor? All right, Barry. 
What does he want with Applewood Manor? Please just tell us. I know that you know. Concentrate, little one. And uh, the camera zooms down right to that little like looking hole in the Ouija board as it slowly jumps and starts moving. You could uh, vote. Now's a good time to vote. Yeah, now's too. a good time to vote. I'm gonna. I oh well. I guess there's only one. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it could still yeah, end up being exactly. I vote that it goes well. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Uh, thumbs up. All right. So. <laughs> Spells. Why? Why would you say that, Barry? Why would you say that? You know what Master will do. It does not matter what the Barry's feelings are for me. I just want to know what the cigarette smoking man wants with Applewood Manor. I know that Barry has a connection to him. Just spells out destruction. All right, that's the end of the scene. So we have one round left, and we have to have love rear its ugly head and have somebody die at the right time. So this scene <clears throat> is uh, after that, after everything. So we're going a little bit more into the future here. And uh, it's nighttime. And little one is out of his cage. The scene probably actually starts with Klaus and he's snoring heavily. <laughs> and you see a... Uh, <laughs> little one that was <laughs> grabs a handful of lollipops and sneaks out through the basement window. You know those little basement windows that just slide open. And he just squeezes a little fat body out. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> suck it up. <laughs> you see his bare feet running through like the unmowed grass, and it's wet. And he goes out to the shed. And he's rattling on the door. And he finally gets the door open. And he's looking around. And then his gaze falls upon the red gas can. And he grabs it and shakes it, but it's empty. And he throws it. And it bangs and it rattles empty. And he's looking around. I know it's in here. <laughs> he sneezes. <laughs> <laughs> and then Samantha appears in the doorway behind him. First you just see her skinny shadow, but then you see it's her. You ready to go? <sighs> Are you going to help me do this? And then he finds another gas can and he picks it up and it's got heft in it. <laughs> Is this a good vote moment, or... I don't know what I'm... <laughs> I don't know. Am I going to help you do this? It's up to you. I don't know what it is yet. Uh, it's got uh, gasoline. You could ask yeah. him. What, yeah. <laughs> I think the vote moment will come when we decide whether he's going to succeed or fail. Mm, okay. So, uh, you're, you're... Fuck. Samantha will say... Do what? We have to look into the cigarette smoking man. And she will flip her backpack a little bit further towards the door to show him. Like, I have new information. You have information? Uh, Concerning the manor, yes. And the family that owned it before Timothy and Klaus's family purchased it. But I thought we were going to burn it down. You were going to take me away from him. Samantha, you promised me. <laughs> I know that Klaus seems bad, but right now he is not our worst enemy. This cigarette smoking man is after both of our families. We need to burn the man to the ground. That's what we need to do. Come on, little one. I will aid you in arson in the future. Right now... 
We have to protect Timothy. He looks sad and puts it down, reaches his hand out, and Samantha grabs it, and they walk out. <laughs> 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 it's not where I wanted that to go at yeah. all. <laughs> I wanted to burn the fucking mansion down <laughs> <laughs> for the smoking man. <laughs> we could, yeah, well, you had to fail, though. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. All right. So what am I going to fail at next? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's make the scene between Timothy and Samantha. And uh, we'll say it happened. We'll say that uh, little one is actually with Samantha at her apartment. Right, introduce a new place. And... Timothy stops by to see Samantha. And when she doesn't open the door, he lets himself into her apartment to find her uh, in one of those uh, crime-solving rooms with pictures of the manor <laughs> posted all over everywhere and red yarn and tacks and... Timoth Cork board. Uh, yeah. Timothy bursts in, drops his backpack down on the table, and spills it out. And you see photographs and books fall out of it and he says Lawrence Burkus is his name he holds up old photographs that date back over a hundred years and as, as Samantha picks it up and looks at it you see the cigarette smoking man Lawrence Burkus standing in a crowd at like a town fair still looks the same age and how is this possible who is this guy what is he it's a little one don't tell klaus he's here no not little one <laughs> lawrence, sorry <laughs> lawrence burkus the cigarette smoking man are pay attention what does he want with the manor why is he after our families? It seems that the family that owned the manor before you two, before the Klauses <laughs> and the Timothys owned it, <laughs> uh, also befell great tragedies. He wants to send it back to the way it was. At this, Timothy will look over the little one. What do you mean by that, the way it was? What was it? What was the manor? It's not what it was, it's what it is. It appears to be the whole entire reason that little one is able to exist. The barrier is, there's something strange about there. You're able to communicate with, with other realms there. Little one himself talks to a man named, or an entity named Barry. It's special, just like me. Well, whatever that manor is hiding, we need to keep it out of this guy's hands, whatever he is. It seems he's been after the manor for generations. We need to put a stop to it. Where's Klaus? He's sleeping still. I hope... Samantha, you have to take me back before he wakes up. It's time we set a trap. Ooh, I like traps. <laughs> you said he tried to buy the manor from you, out and out. He did. He made an offer. 1.5 million. Tell him that you'll take it. That's how we can lure him into a trap. I was thinking we can use... <laughs> <laughs> These bear traps. <laughs> <laughs> the chains rattling as he brings. <laughs> hey, Scoob. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. <laughs> I'm feeling it. Whatever this guy is, he's got to be over 100 years old. And look at him, he hasn't aged. And he's got to want whatever power the the property or orchard has to give whatever allowed Klaus to animate little one I'm judging <sighs> by sorry 
<laughs> that's all. That's all. <laughs> Maybe that's the answer. Maybe if we find out what Klaus did to animate little one, Maybe we'll know what's so special about the property. Let me take you back to the night that Master created me. <laughs> or maybe that's another scene. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have to fail this. Uh, fuck me. I don't know. Uh, what, are, what are you hoping so to what I what I wanted that? to do was establish what made the property special, which I didn't do. Ear may wool or ear, fuck me, Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> totally rolled with it. I was like, "Yep, ear may." <laughs> What's ear may doing? Tell me. <laughs> yeah. uh, Casting a chromatic herb. <laughs> 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 uh, Samantha will. Uh... Remember, love still needs to rear its ugly head. So I maybe. I don't know how to make that do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Samantha will look disappointed. And uh, hold... How big is the uh, little one now? So she'll hold the pouch of her sweatshirt out. So little he's one... He's like can... a four or five year old. Oh, okay. You're big. Yeah, I think he's growing yeah, fast. Yeah, fast. So uh, yeah, Samantha will just say, come along, little one. Let's get you home. We haven't made much headway tonight. As they're leaving... Uh... Well, it's it's your house, right? My apartment. So yeah. I guess I'd be leaving too. <laughs> All right, that's it. All right. What about you? That was you. No, no that, that was, was her. Her, her, yeah. yeah, that was Christy's scene. Yeah, it's called Irma. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying. Yeah, my scene ended with Samantha kind of shrugging at all the information she has around her and still not knowing exactly what's going on. Walks out of the room. Well, there's an idea to set a trap for the cigarette smoking man. Mm-hmm. Um, love rears its ugly head. Could could be. I mean, it sounds like sounds like a weakness of sorts. Like a ne- or yeah, yeah, or a negative manifestation of love. Mm. Like due to due to love. Yeah, something bad happens. Right. Like maybe the trap fails because. You know, he got he got his hands on Samantha, and is a you know what I mean. All right, so are you setting the scene or choosing? Well, there's no choosing to. Well, I guess you (laughs) I guess you could still have uh, other people choose to set the scene, or you could set it yourself. So after so is this the final round, and then we do closure? Yeah. So we got wrapped. Let's this wrap up it up, three then. of us. Yeah. yeah. So this yeah. scene is going to take place at the manor, maybe out in the grove. It's going to have Timothy, Samantha, Klaus, little one, and Lawrence Burkus, the cigarette smoking man. And it's going to open up with a full moon. (laughs) (laughs) Out in the uh, orchard, the trees are dark, casting eerie shadows across the overgrown grass. And at this point, apples had already started falling, making the ground a bit lumpy. (laughs) Difficult terrain. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, some big lumpy apples. Jay, always with the difficult terrain. <laughs> Timothy's going to be uh, standing next to Klaus, arming a bear trap. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case this doesn't work, at least we have these. <laughs> We don't even know what the smoking man does yet. We're going to put him in a bear trap. We don't know if he's a mysterious entity, a real man, a fucking... Hey, hey, get it together. (laughs) That's exactly my point. We have no idea what this thing is capable of doing. I think he's special, just like me. Well, we know he's old. He's really fucking old. Yeah, so we cover our bases. 
I have a steak. I do not like the premise of him coming here to buy this manor. That was just a ruse to get him to come here. We're, we're not going to sign anything. But he wants this property. And it seems he'll stop at nothing for it. Did you bring the silver bullets? We don't know how to stop this thing. My dear, I always have silver bullets. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when you run into a lycanthropy. <laughs> I come from a werewolf with rare its ugly head. (laughs) Every full moon. (laughs) Think I don't bring silver bullets. Timothy finishes setting the final bear trap on the outskirts. Do you have the salt? (laughs) (laughs) Who's got the salt? Little one, did you bring the salt like I told you? Little one's just licking it. Yes, I have it. Why is it wet? <laughs> it's just moist out. It's not my fault. It's going to be here any moment. Reminds me what our plan is. Sweet, sweet Timothy. <laughs> <laughs> the plan is once he enters this circle. <laughs> <laughs> the salt circle. Bear trap. I- I would <laughs> jump on him. The bear trap is just a contingency in case the salt doesn't work. And now, little one, he is too dangerous. I suggest you stay safely. Keep your distance. Yes, master. You do love me. That's a good idea, Samantha. You probably shouldn't be here either. There's no reason for you to be here. In this story at all, really. That looks like... <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's no reason you I should be it. risking. <laughs> Samantha looked very insulted. Very insulted uh, at that. And then, and then sad. And she almost wells up. And she says, because I, I love you, Timothy... And then she throws the wooden stake down on the ground oh, in an shit. act of drama and then walks off into the night alone. S- Samantha. Samantha. God damn it. Keep your head about your boy. We are about to confront great evil. You're right. Also, Barry says. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're right. Let's get into position. He'll be here any moment. Somehow this isn't going to work out for you. I got it. At this, the camera will pan up to show the night sky as time passes. And then it shifts to Timothy leaning against one of the apple trees. And then he hears a, a sound as though an apple was getting crushed by a foot (laughs) (laughs) he snaps his attention into the darkness and he looks over to his companion Klaus who appears to have also noticed that somebody was lurking in the shadows Klaus (laughs) Klaus you hear that I hear that Smithy And before Timothy or Klaus could do or say anything after that, they hear a familiar voice from the shadows. Diaper fall. (laughs) (laughs) Couldn't help myself. What are we doing out here in the darkness? And why do I smell salt? And from the light, from the darkness, the face of Lawrence Burkus appears in the moonlight. Uh, yeah, why don't you come a little closer, Lawrence? <laughs> Timothy says. <laughs> <laughs> so I could see you better. 
How can we sign any documents in such horrendous light? <laughs> yes. Lawrence takes a step forward, but stops right before the line of salt. Says, I see what you are up to. You did not fall for your antics, young Timothy. Hey, he's got Samantha. At, at that. <laughs> At the sound of the little <laughs> creepy voice, Lawrence turns his, snaps his attention to, the, to his left. And he takes a step back into a bear trap. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> Got him! <laughs> snaps over his leg and he, <laughs> he howls in pain. And he says... His voice now becomes a low rumble. Do you think you have got me now? And then, with his other hand from the shadows, pulls Samantha into the light. I've got your friend. Samantha! No! And then the scene. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you can leave me with that. <laughs> We gotta wrap it up. There's only two more fucking parts. <laughs> right? Alright, so. I'm actually gonna carry on. I'm gonna carry on the same scene. Uh, so we're all gonna be there again. So uh, this Samantha is being held by Lawrence. <laughs> Burkus. The cigarette smoking man. Who's now a demon of sorts. Mm. And has a Something. foot has a foot in the bear trap. <laughs> yeah. Has a foot in a bear trap and, a, and an arm holding on a Samantha. But is on the outside of a salt circle. Let's also look at um, Timothy. Do not lose your head, young Timothy. Timothy is clearly lo- losing his head as he doesn't know what to do now. Stricken by... This newfound love. The stakes are much greater than this woman. Damn it, Klaus. What do you expect? Should we just let her get killed? He won't do anything, will you, Berkus? Yes, we know who you are. You know nothing. Oh. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> You have been dwelling on a gateway <laughs> for years, and I need it back, or this girl dies. Klaus is going to try to steadily move the gun with the silver bullets that he had, but his hand, you can see his hand shaking. <laughs> as he aims it toward the cigarette smoking man and quickly just whoop, whips it out all the way and fires Klaus, with his shaky no! hand and you see Samantha falling from the arms of the cigarette smoking man hmm. it appears I have been shot poof Dude, now it's up to fucking little one to save the day. What? <laughs> yeah, dude, you gotta take him out, dude. <laughs> so, little one grabs his face and pulls it down. He's so scared. And uh, Klaus shoots the bullet, and then little one just charges forward. And as he does, the smoky man just raises his hand, and the circle of salt just goes up in flames engulfing uh surrounding um timothy and klaus and little one inside and little one just charges and jumps through the flames (laughs) (laughs) all right i vote it's gonna go damn it that's such a hard vote i'm going good yeah i'll go good i'll go good (laughs) 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 all right Fuck yeah, dude. Little one's taking us home. Yeah. Samantha, little one Samantha takes Samantha it home. was little one's friend, man. Was. She just got shot. Yeah. Always treat him well. Yeah. So, uh, jumps, jumps through, through the, the flames. flames and, uh, 
Now I'm thinking of like when the Night King just you know grabs the little one by the throat, <laughs> <laughs> catches him. So it looked like he was gonna get it out of nowhere at the last second. Catches the little one by the throat. But uh, Klaus re-steadies his hand and fires again. When he sees little, yeah, Klaus sees little one leaping through the flames and sees him being grabbed by the smoking man. Klaus just shouts, No, you will not take another one of my children! <laughs> <laughs> and he <laughs> rushes forward, this time shooting again, his hand like steadied by rage, not even by by calmness. Just push. Puts a silver bullet. You could see, like, the camera follows the silver bullet. <laughs> <laughs> right between the eyes. And it just, the brains blow out the back. But not before Samantha dies on the ground. So the brains well, blow up, out. Hold up. That might be determined in the aftermath. Oh, yeah. it might be? Yeah. Mm. All right, so then the scene would end. He was, like, squeezing, crushing little one, but then he's shot in the head, and little one drops and is unconscious, and the uh, the flames suck back down into the ground, and Timothy says, Samantha. He rushes over. Samantha. And Klaus strokes little one's head and here <laughs> over Samantha. That's how the scene ends. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, so Dude, now. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love this ending. <laughs> <laughs> You're baked. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. I already have the music playing. Yeah, I'm thinking like in the end of Poltergeist, you know, the <laughs> la la la. la. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what we have to do is we roll the dice in front of us. You guys don't like this ending? <laughs> it's fucking epic. And we want to uh, total up the highest number of die. Oh, actually, we want to add up the reds and add up the blues. Okay. And then subtract the lower number from the higher number. So, for example, I have a five on my red and a nine on my blue. So I would do nine minus five. That would give me four blue. Okay. All right. What do you got? Eleven blue. What about you, Christy? Fifteen. 15, all red, huh? <laughs> yeah. Wow, oh, dude. She <laughs> pled out hard. I got six That's blue. That's actually good for her. I got six blue. All right, so then uh, in the aftermath table, we'll start We'll start with Christy, who was the first player. And 15 black. Awesome outcome. Insanely great. You will emerge. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You will emerge unscathed in the end. Uh, if there's a girl involved, she's dropping her drawers. This is really a Why? feel-good movie. Why man. is she doing that? <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, it sounds like sounds like Timothy. <laughs> Timothy's going to be dropping his drawers for you. Oh, okay. Yeah, you emerge unscathed. It's the best outcome you could possibly hope for. So do you give us an epilogue here? Do we all... So I'll I'll go around and tell you each what your thing is maybe and then we'll do, do it yeah, or no, do you yeah. want to do it one at a time? All right. Yeah. Tell us what we all get and then this way we can All right. So and Jay, uh not too shabby. You made it out with your dignity intact through some fluke and there might even be a little bit of either profit or self-respect. There's a little bit of a positive. I got it. Element. And myself uh, bitter. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it's like to be utterly crushed, casually brought low, forced to eat your own words and stand mute and powerless before your enemies. They gloat and you are helpless. And uh, you had six blue? Eleven. Oh, sorry. That eleven, that not too shabby was for you then. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Wait. Jay is actually weak. 
you're busted, beat, broke down, but at least you've learned a lesson about human greed and frailty. Okay, I can work with that. All right. So yours was the not too shabby. You've got your dignity intact and even a little bit of a positive outcome. Okay. All right. So let's hear Christie's. So Samantha... Uh, oh, okay. So, Klaus, feeling so badly about shooting Samantha, offers to help her get back on her feet, and she builds a cabin at the back of the orchard where she gets to hang out and take care of little one all the time. And that's what happens to Samantha in the end. She doesn't end up with Timothy because Timothy's a dick. <laughs> Wait, what? That's not what I expected at all. I uh, know. What the fuck? <laughs> so we see. So basically, like, if this was a scene, we would see, like, you know, her going through the orchard to her cabin, playing with little one, being yeah. happy in that yeah. space. Uh, my turn. Yep. Timothy is approaching his bookstore. And he has two cups of coffee with him. And when he goes in, he it's just him there. And he puts both the cups on the, on the counter. And he just looks around lonely. And he is just drinking his. Uh. <laughs> well, I had him do something because yours ended shitty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Timothy's not really a dick. He just your story ends bad. <laughs> we see Klaus once again standing over little one, whose hand is moving over the Ouija board, and Barry is spelling out "not over." And you see a frightened look in Klaus's eyes. That was like literally my idea. That's cool. I can still go up. Um, but you're, you're just supposed to be like, we're supposed to see you coming out in a fantastic way. Right. Well, no, I was or thinking... Or a pretty um, good way. Yeah. Oh, I want to change my ending now. It's the, uh, it's the future and <laughs> little one's like growing up now and he's like getting out of uh, school. He's in like middle school or something, you know. <laughs> he's got, like, How does his he books. pose as a kid? <laughs> he's like fucking. He Mac might be looking me. like a kid now, you <laughs> yeah. know. What if it was just an evolution? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He actually, he's like looking pretty normal. Maybe he, there's like no something hair just a body. little off about him. <laughs> like no his eyebrows. fingers are a little long. <laughs> but um, that's why I was thinking though, like he was gonna get back to the cabin that he's staying at with you now. But yeah, he's fucking talking to Barry and the Ouija board and it's it's not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's a wrap. Thank you for joining us once again for our dalliance into fiasco. Good game. It's pretty fun. Let's do it again. We will. <laughs>